What's up, YouTube? Welcome to Bible Wisdom. You know, I wanted to make a point that, you know, I believe we can't overlook what the book of 1 John says in regards to sin. And I believe that um, God, he not only wants to save us from sin, meaning, you know, forgive us of our sins, but he also wants to save us from sinning. Many, meaning in our daily life, our weekly, monthly, yearly life, as life goes on, he wants to not have us in sin, doing sins, committing sins. And so um, I think this does become very evident in um, scripture and you know, it seems to me that um, I think we all need to work on not sinning in our daily life, in our weekly life, in our monthly life, in our yearly life, where we come to a point where we never sin again. Now, um, there are some things that you can do that may not be beneficial, but it may not be a sin. And then there's some things that God wants to save us from that are a sin. But there's other things that you could do that it, it could just be a failure. And it's not necessarily sin, but, you know, you crash your car, you get into an accident. You know, that's not a sin. Um, you know, you... Uh, you feel tempted in some way, you know, maybe you watched a, a movie and, you know, you saw a beautiful person in there and you're like, oh, you know, I wish I could be with them. Or, you know, maybe you're feeling like you want to sleep with them. Whatever the case may be, you know, we have to really differentiate between what is a temptation and what is actually, you know, something that we shouldn't do. And so, um, what does that actually look like in our life? What does that actually look like? Um, you know, I think that looks like are increasing in our knowledge, you know, um, just as a baby, you know, God, you know, gives us certain knowledge, you know, we, we, we do know about certain things, um, just right off the bat, you know, just coming into the world, you know, we do know, um, a little bit, you know, but, there are still things that we need to learn. For example, um, for me, you know, you you can kind of grow up and know right and wrong. You know, you kind of grow up and know um, good and evil. You kind of grow up knowing, you, you know, a few different things. But for me, uh, when I grew up, I was taught certain things, but I didn't actually start to come into a more acute knowledge of right and wrong, meaning more of a narrower, narrow view or road of right and wrong until I encountered the Bible. Because before the Bible, you kind of just, you know, you know things like, oh, you, you're not supposed to speed uh, if you're driving. Or you know things like, you know, be kind and courteous to people. Um, you know things like, you know, fairly, you know, often you probably know, you know, you're not supposed to hit someone. You know things like you're supposed to do your homework. You know, you're supposed to go to school and be on time. Um, you know, you're supposed to, uh, say please and thank you. You get it. So you, we know kind of those things, but throughout our life, we kind of just have this, 
you know, whatever I, out of those set of rules, I whatever I know is right and wrong, that's what I do. But it's not until we actually um, encounter the Bible that we know more and more about, you know, um, specific things that we aren't supposed to do. And mo- most likely, we have already done some things that we aren't supposed to do. And it's just becoming, it becomes more obvious when we start to increase in our knowledge. So I think one of the things that I keep repeating is we have to know what the difference is between right and wrong. And I think if we increase in our knowledge, you know, um, that's going to lead to steps of being set free. Now, specifically what Jesus mentioned about being set free is if you continue in his teaching, meaning you continue knowing what it is, what he teaches, but you continue to do what he says. So, you know, you might be sinning here and there and maybe you don't know it's a sin, but you start to treat others how they want to be treated. You know, you start to practice that a little bit intentionally, or you start to not to judge someone instead of, you know, condemning someone, you start to, you know, say, oh, I'm not going to judge that person. And you get the idea. But those two things that I mentioned are specific things that is taught in the word of God. And so I have found that I have been set free from certain specific sins when I started to heed what the Bible is telling me to do. Instead of just reading over your Bible and reading over, oh, you know, Jesus wants us to do this, Jesus wants us to do that. When you start to listen to it and actually try to practice what it says, and then you get to a point where you hear in the book of First John how the Bible says, confess your sins. And I think that's where it really became more free for me to actually be set free is that I confessed it. You know, I, I, instead of just kind of keeping it inside, you know, not really talking about it, not really wanting to acknowledge it, even in my own mind, it became kind of like, okay, I'm going to tell someone about this or I'm going to start acknowledging it in my head that this is not something that pleases God. And that's when I became, you know, more free when I started to confess it. And, you know, one, confessing it to God and saying, God, this is wrong, but also confessing it to other people Um, because the book of James talks about confessing our faults to one another. And so I did those two things, you know, I did, I confessed it to God, you know, I, I acknowledged that it was wrong, you know, in a prayer, I said, you know, God, I've been doing this, I've been doing that, you know, but also I actually told, if you have someone that you can talk to, um, one, it could just be a pastor where you talk to a pastor and you're like, hey, I'm I've I've been doing this, you know, um, and you could ask, oh, what should I do? You know, you could ask that question. But also you kind of just you can say something like, you know, hey, I'm just wanting to kind of get this off my chest that, you know, I've been struggling with this or I've been doing this and I just wanted to tell someone. And that process is coming into the light you know so the things that you've been doing you're acknowledging that this is not secret to God you know God knows this God sees this and he wants you to 
bring this into light. He wants you to step out of the darkness. And, you know, when something is dark, you know, in darkness, you can't really um, see anything. And you, you yourself are hidden. You're hidden from others and you yourself can't see. And so it's kind of like, when you come into the light, you are acknowledging that God is there, you know, and was there in the darkness, you know, but he was against you. And you're you're coming into the light. And so I think we need to repeat this process to not sin again. And, you know, you can't I can't really ignore what um, First John is really saying, because yes, I I see what others are explaining about. You know, I I mean, I listen to what they're saying about we don't sin in our spirit, but we still are under the flesh. We still have our flesh. But later on, after Romans seven, Paul says in Romans chapter eight that we don't aren't we are not to walk according to the flesh and he already states that you know living that way is not good and so basically i think you can't really ignore what some things are being said in the rest the full context of scripture so where where are you today i think you have to ask yourself you know um where where are you in in regards to sin i mean do you have daily sins you know uh is it more of a choice because if it boils down to a choice, the Bible says in Hebrews, in the book of Hebrews, that there is no longer a sacrifice for people who sin willfully, meaning Jesus may not forgive that sin because you chose to do it. Now, let's look at the other side of that. Are you saying you can't, you don't have control. You, you're saying, are you saying, you know, I can't control this sin. Like I just, I feel like I have to do it. And that is the point where you are a slave. That's if you feel like you don't have control, that is what a slave to sin is. And the Bible teaches, the true teaching teaches that We can no longer be slaves. A slave does something outside of their will. You know, if a slave, if they want to quit, they're they're tired of working. They can't quit. They have to keep going. And so a slave um, has no control. And so... If you're a slave, you need to step into that process of walking in the light, bringing your sins out into the open by confession and by renewing your mind, meaning you need to realize that what you're doing is sinful and stepping into that process of, you know, I'm not going to remain in the darkness I'm going to bring this out into the light. And so it seems to me that there's only two options. It's either sinning willfully or you're sinning against your will. It's a slave. And if it's a choice, why would you be making a choice? Why would you choose to sin? You know, it doesn't really make sense. And so if it's a slave, then... If you're if you're considering yourself a slave of sin, then 
Jesus already died for that. That's the whole reason Jesus came was to set us free from willfully sinning. And so to me, if he set us free from, I mean, slave is sinning without against our will or sinning in our in our will, meaning choosing to sin, if those are the only two options, then it seems to me that Jesus set us free from all types of sin, whether we want to or not. Because the Bible says that, you know, Jesus came to set us free. He said we'll be set free if we continue in his teaching. And so I think it's a stepping out of faith. We have to step out in faith and really believe, you know, yes, accept the message of the gospel. And, you know, there's nothing in the Bible. It's only man's opinion, but there's nothing in the Bible telling me that I will always struggle with some sort of sin. You know, I I can't find anything in the Bible telling me that I have to continue in sin. And, you know, for anyone to give you that message of, you know, we have to sin or, you know, we we never get free from sin. I feel like that is not completely the right message. So anyway, that's it for this video. Um, that's kind of just what I wanted to share. And, you know, we we all have that choice of whether we are accepting it or not. And, um, you know, I try to I'm trying to just share what I have interpreted. I think we can find videos. You can search on YouTube and you can find people to tell you what you want to hear. You know, oh, it's okay. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, I think you can find people to that will tell you, you know, the answer you're looking for. But we need to find the right answer, you know, not just the one that we want to hear or something that is easy you know and I think that's why I'm making this video is that and other people have made videos like this there's a few other people that believe the same thing but you know I I believe that um that what I've just shared is the true message that we're supposed to be hearing and so anyway thanks for watching this video uh, and I will talk to you on the next video. See ya.